So migration of exchange for enterprise organisations has been quite a headache over the past few years, I think, because the previous versions of exchange all upgraded reasonably well. But then when 2007 came along and 2010, organisations were looking at new hardware, new software. They were looking at essentially a whole new environment, exchange environment. So you had to really think about what you were doing. You couldn't just whack a disc in and off you go. And there's lots of people I've spoken to in particular who've had problems. They've, they've forgotten particular services or they've had a bespoke piece of software written for them at some point back in history that now no longer works. And they've had to then go around and sweep up and clean up afterwards. Um, all of those small niggly problems, which to some people are quite a large line of business applications that are used on a daily basis. Um, and that's cost them more and they've, they haven't expected that. So they've, they've really learned that lesson the hard way. Um, at the same time, whilst you're making that migration, look for a solution that's going to offer you continuity. So if there's a problem or if something goes wrong, uh, or perhaps if you're taking longer than you imagined and your users are left without a, a proper mail environment, then continuity is essential because they can continue to work during the migration. And the same is true with policy control. Continue to apply policy control, continue to archive, um, make sure all of those services are still up and running whilst the users are, are migrating across to a new cloud platform. So if you're migrating to Office 365, you are probably taking a leap into the cloud um, and your users are looking to the IT organisation to make sure that goes smoothly. So there's lots of things you'd want to deal with beforehand. It's likely that your exchange environment is probably fairly large, fairly, fairly bloated in some instances. Um, so dealing with the big data problem before you make the move into the cloud, again, is essential, just like with any exchange migration, because it means you have the flexibility of being able to move your users in a more dynamic and speedy fashion into the cloud. But also the big data isn't a problem. You don't have to wait for mailboxes to migrate or send data off to, uh, to Microsoft, probably because they wouldn't accept it. Whereas Mimecast, you're able to give us that data on an encrypted USB hard drive and we can then ingest that into our archive and make it available to the users through Outlook. So they don't lose the data and they retain a connection to the data. I think one of the biggest issues with migrating to Office 365 is, is moving the data. You're obviously going to have a, a fairly large exchange store that you have to migrate up to the cloud as well. So it's all very well saying you'll migrate users next weekend, but if that takes you longer than you'd plan, the users are left without service. So one of the ways Mimecast can help with with Microsoft customers moving to Office 365 is by letting the customer give us the data beforehand. So we'll ingest the data and we'll make it available to the end users. So then the actual IT team only have to move very small mailboxes to Office 365, which obviously is quicker, uh, and the user can be there much faster and they can get to work with those services um, a lot sooner than perhaps if they had a several gigabyte mailbox to deal with. So dealing with the data beforehand offline, for want of a better phrase, is better than trying to migrate those mailboxes in one big hit.